Okay, so this is going to be the first of a few videos where we're going to start looking at uh, real life questions and problems and where we can start using the tools we learned in the last few videos. Okay, so uh, this question here we have in front of us, we have a telephone pole, this big red thing here, and there are two wires, which are these two red wires here, and we want to find out the height of the telephone pole. Okay, so we know that this is 25 degrees, we know this angle here is 32 degrees, we know that this distance here is 20 meters. Okay, and we want to find h so the way we're going to start this is by looking at the question it says telephone pole that means we can assume that there is a right angle here oh better make that a little bit smaller so we can assume that's a right angle because it's a man-made structure okay so all man-made structures you can assume they're right angles and that's about it okay you can only assume it's a, a right angle again if it's a man-made structure a building a telephone pole etc etc also we're going to start scribbling other angles we know in so we know if that's 32 and that's 90, that we can find out this angle here, okay? Because they all have to add up to 180. So if we say 180 minus 90 minus 32, then we can find out this last angle here. And that's going to be equal to 180 minus 90 minus 32 is gonna be 58, okay? So that means this is going to be 58 degrees, okay? We can also do the same for this side here. So if you just take, uh, so this, this is gonna be a straight line, so it has to be 180 degrees. So I'm gonna say 180 minus 32, that's gonna be equal to 148 degrees. So let's put the degree symbol there. So then this is gonna be 148 degrees. And then close that off. And then we can work this one out as well. So we wanna find out this angle. It's gonna be 180, minus 148 minus 25 and that's going to give us seven degrees okay so this last one here is just seven degrees and yeah okay so now uh, there's really one more thing we're going to do before we start is we're going to label every point so remember in the last video we talked about labeling the points it makes it much easier so we're going to call this one here a call this one here b this one here, C, and the last one, D. So the one in the middle there, that point is gonna be point D. Okay, um, yeah, so now I think we're ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take each triangle individually. I'm gonna go through the checklist, and actually first I'm gonna write the checklist out. So number one, we have Pythagoras. We're always gonna look for Pythagoras first. Then two, we're gonna look for sine, cos, or tan. Then the third thing we're gonna look for is where we can use the sine rule and then the last thing we're going to look for is the cosine rule and if we break each triangle up and look at each one individually like this um, we're going to be able to find h eventually okay so I'll start by looking at the triangle adb so i'll go orange for that so we'll look at it here i'm going to look triangle adb okay so that's just a symbol for a triangle that's the letter a so you don't get a little confused uh, and it's going to be this, this, and this. So we're gonna have a triangle like this. It's gonna be a right angle triangle. This is gonna be H. This is 32 degrees. And this is 58, isn't it? Yeah, 58. 58 degrees, okay? So if we look at our checklist, we look at this triangle here. We can't use Pythagoras because we only have one side. We can't use sine, cos, or tan because we only have one side as well, we need one extra side. We can't use the sine rule or the cosine rule for the same reason. So we're gonna leave this triangle for now and we'll come back for it, okay? Uh, next, we're gonna look at the triangle ACB or ABC. So a lot of people uh, would kind of neglect that, looking at the whole thing um, altogether. They might just see these two separate triangles, but looking at the big triangle uh, can be really helpful sometimes as well. So I'll do that, I'll go blue. Now, triangle a b c that's going to be the bigger one okay this is going to be our point a this is going to be our point that's c and then b is the one directly under b and this is c so we have h we have our right angle we have 25 degrees and that's all we have for now i think Oh, we have the top as well is going to be 7 plus 58, so it's going to be 65 degrees. 
there we go okay uh, and again if we go through our checklist pythagoras sine cos tan the sine rule and the cosine rule we run into the same problem as this one here so we won't be able to solve anything immediately with this either so now i'm going to go to the last triangle and um, we'll go light blue which is going to be a c d okay so i'll go triangle a c d it's going to be like this here I'm actually going to redraw that triangle that won't be much good it's too small so don't be afraid to draw really big uh diagrams either makes oh done the exact same thing again okay that one there's a little bit better yeah don't be afraid to draw big diagrams uh, if you draw tiny little diagrams trying to squeeze things in it's just going to cause trouble so 748, 25, and 20. Okay. 25, 148, 7, and 20. Okay. And then also I'm just going to label them. So this is going to be A, this is going to be C, and this is going to be D. So I'm actually just going to label this one quickly as well. This is going to be A. B and D, sorry. Um, anyway, so you may see when going through really slowly, going through each triangle, you might be able to see straight away that there's no uh, Pythagoras, sine, cos, tan, sine rule, cosine rule, etc. There's no way you can find anything. If you, if you see that straight away, that's great. But the reason I'm going through it so slowly is just to show you. So in this example, it isn't uh, too hard to see straight away that there's nothing there. But in other examples, it might be much more difficult. So it is better off just to go through it step by step. It's a little bit slower. Um, the more practice you get, the quicker you'll get at it, basically. So this one here, so we can't use Pythagoras or sine, cos, or tan because it's not a right angle triangle, but we can use the sine rule. So finally, we're going to start doing something. So uh, I'll go purple, um, and we're going to use this angle here. So I'm going to call it A, uh, and I'll write out the sine rule. So it's A over sine of A is going to be equal to B over sine of B, okay? That's going to give us a over sine of 148 is equal to b, which is going to be 20 in this case. That's the only other side we know. So it's going to be 20 over sine of 7. Okay, so that means a is going to be equal to 20 multiplied by sine 148, all divided by sine of 7. Let's stick that into our calculator. And A is going to be equal to 69.35 meters. 69.35 meters. And I'm going to box that off. Okay. Um, so we're going to scribble that in as well. I'll go use a different color. I'll go blue. 69.35. Uh, and I'm also going to draw that in anywhere. It's useful here. So it's not useful there. But in this one here, I should do a different color. It's going to be 69.35, okay? So now, uh, some of you might have spotted it here, that this triangle, ABC, we can actually use some of our rules now. So we use Pythagoras, sine, cos, tan, sine, or cosine rule. We can use Pythagoras, but we can use sine, and we're going to be able to find out what H is by using sine, okay? So I'm going to say, so remember, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So in this case, sine 25 is going to be H, which is the opposite over the hypotenuse, which is 69.35, okay? And that means if we multiply both sides by 69.35, we get h is equal to 69.35 multiplied by sine of 25. We can find our number for the height of the pole, and that's going to be equal to 36.6. Point seven five meters and there we have it okay so i know it was quite slow i went through it quite slowly but the next few videos i'm going to go through uh, a little bit quicker because uh, hopefully but it, i just really want to get uh, get it across to you that this is the best method of doing it drawing them out separately going through the checklist every single time uh, and it's just you end up just doing a load of small simple calculations to find uh, the solution to a question that isn't too simple. And anyway, we're going to look at more examples like these in the next few videos. Um, what I forgot to mention is you should pause the video and then try the question yourself before 
uh, you watch the video, so then you can check the video, check it at the end, and then you don't have to watch the whole video. It'll be a little bit quicker for you, uh, and it makes you learn a lot better. But anyway, we'll see you next time for more examples like this.